Hello everyone, it's uh, Duncan Sheeb here. I just wanted to check in and say hi. Um, we are living in the strange and unprecedented times and I just wanted to make sure that you are doing okay. Um, if you ever need a time to have, a, if you ever want to have a call uh, or, or send me a message, uh, I'm always happy to have a chat just to see how, how you're going. Um, you know, I don't want anyone to be alone during this period of time. And you can be lonely even with surrounded by people and you might just need uh, a mental health break or whatever it might be. Um, but please always feel free to give me a call or send me an email anytime. Um, the, the world we're living in is going to be completely different. Uh, for my event-based clients, we don't know when this will finish and when we'll be able to get back to business. Um, but that being said, uh, there are certainly opportunities for you and your clients to be able to do good. Um, I've unfortunately had many clients say that they're sort of packing up shop and they're not going to do any fundraising because they don't want to bother your donors. Um, I actually think this is a, a massive mistake um, because if you're not talking to them, someone else will be talking to them. Um, and a donor at the moment just wants to know that you care. Um, it's not necessarily about getting on the phone and, and asking for money. It's really asking how they are. Um, if you look at your donor sets and, and maybe your donor database, you'll probably see that you have a, a larger uh, audience which might be older and some of the most vulnerable. Um, so it really is a good opportunity to, to pick up the phone and see how they are because what people are going to remember is how you made them feel during this period and that's key you know you don't need to have an event to raise money you don't need to have an event to make people feel good uh, what we need to do is have better relationships with the donors that we have and that requires us picking up the telephone and saying hello it really is as simple as that um, a lot of nonprofits don't, you know, they're under resourced, they don't have the people or the capacity, but now is the optimum time to be able to do this and get on the phone and say hello to your clients. I implore you to do it. Do not shut up shop during this time and think that people other, you know, because people are speaking to your donors. Other organizations are. They might donate to six or seven or eight of other organizations. And if they're on the phone making them feel good, making them feel safe, hopeful and giving them inspiration then they're going to get your fundraising the, the fundraising dollar is going to go to them so please 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 pick up the phone please communicate with your database please make it personal because that's going to make the difference in their lives as nonprofits, we spend so much time asking for money we spend so much time with our tin cup in our hand and we don't ever give back. So this is the opportunity for most nonprofits to be able to give something back. And it's kindness. It's care. It's compassion. And they're not going to cost your organization anything apart from your time on the phone. So please, if you're looking at your, your, your holes in your budget, you're looking at where you think your money is going to come from, you have everyone there to ask. It's a matter of picking up the call. You do not need new donors. You need to make sure you have strong relationships with all your existing donors. Anyone that's ever given in a paddle raise, I would consider a major gift. So if you're thinking like a major gift officer, you want to be taking that $100 to 500, the 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, 5,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 20,000. There is so much opportunity at this time to be able to show that you care and the money will come. Don't make it about fundraising, make it about compassion, empathy, and showing people that you care about them. That's how you're going to continue to change. I would suggest that out of this disaster, which is COVID-19, that potentially 60 or 70 nonprofits percent of the 1.5 million may not exist in 12 to 18 months. And that's because fundamentally they may have been broken beforehand and they might have 
not embrace a change they needed to change from a change management standpoint point, or they're going to be stuck in an event cycle. You know, most, a lot of nonprofit clients and that I know already have shed staff, they've shed resources. And so how do you deliver on mission? And don't get me, don't get me wrong. I know how hard it is because I think that nonprofits are held to an unfair advantage, complete unfair advantage where 10% of overhead is considered good business and good stewardship because no nonprofit, no for-profit could ever do that. They can't run at a 10% overhead. And so your hands are tied behind your back and I totally understand that. But the opportunity to get on the phone and build relationships will get four, five, six, 10x returns than putting on an event. So that's my little bit about that up front. Now, if you do want to do an event, and a virtual event, there are plenty of opportunities to do that. Firstly, you need the right software, the right auction software, the right P2P software. And for me, there is no better software uh, and auction software and company that delivers the right product, has the right support than one cause. It is the best investment, and I've been saying this before COVID, that you will make in your organization when it comes to event fundraising. Now, it is even better because you can do all this on the phone. You can do it mobile, you can send text messages out, you can send emails, people can register. It is really easy for them to do. So let's just say you want to do a virtual event and you want to make it a video style event. Well, for me at the moment, things have changed even more. I had the idea of a telethon style event six, seven weeks ago. Now because of social distancing and the fact that essential services, you know, it makes it very hard to do. That saying, there is still opportunity because if you look at an online or a live streaming event, whether it's in six weeks or six months, it's a massive opportunity because at a, at a traditional gala, your, your um, head count, you're restricted by head count. So you might have 200, 300, 400, 500 people in the event. I've got a client who has 12,000 active donors. 12,000 active donors. And you think of about an event which might have 300 people, there's 30% of that who are coming along as friends or the corporate tables or sponsors, and they will never give you a red cent. So there's a massive opportunity here to be able to really expand your database, your viewership uh, through not just, you know, people coming to the event, but all your donors. And then on top of that, through marketing and strategy of that, you're able to get in front of tens of thousands of people. This also makes sure that you're able to get more sponsorship because when it comes to sponsorship, being in a little magazine on the table, which nobody reads, doesn't hold a lot of value. But to a sponsor that's, you can say, well, I'm going to be in front of 10, 12, 15, 20,000 people live stream. You can sponsor this, you can sponsor that. You can have ad time. It makes it a really good proposition for them. So there are certain things that we're able to do and, you know, be able to execute from a virtual fundraising standpoint. And I'm more than happy to chat and more than happy to take you through all of those ideas, whether they're there for the, the, the near future or six or 12 months time, because I really think there is a great opportunity to change. But overall event fundraising will need to change. It will need to evolve. It will need to have better relationships. It will basically need to have a major gift officer in your event team to be able to make sure you continue to build and grow and develop relationships. So it is not all bad news, though there is plenty of bad news and more bad news to come, unfortunately, throughout uh, the next you know, six months. But if you're looking to do an event, or looking to change, or looking to get some ideas, I'm here to help, I want to help. Um, whether it's me making phone calls for your organization, uh, I'm more than happy to do that, and obviously come up with other innovative and interesting ideas. Uh, one of the things in New York that I also am doing is that through a donor advised fund and real estate, being able to donate 70% of any income that comes through from a listing to your nonprofit. Uh, so there are, there are interesting and fun ways which I've been looking at and obviously having to do to be able to help nonprofits uh, in New York. So please make sure that uh, you don't be a stranger. Please feel free to give me a call any point in time because I'm here to help and I want to help. Thanks very much for listening.